Hi, I'm Melora Harden, and I just talked to Kara, and we had an awesome time. You're going to want to listen. Hi, this is Kara Mayer Robinson. Welcome to Really Famous. Today, my guest is Melora Hardin. You know Melora as Jan on The Office. Jan is really just so Jan. She's also in the current freeform series, The Bull Type, which I just happened to watch and really enjoy. Melora plays Jacqueline, the editor in chief of a big glossy magazine called Scarlet. And Melora is also currently in A Million Little Things. Do you watch that? A lot of people do. She plays Maggie's mother, Patricia, and recently had a story arc with Jason Ritter, who was a previous guest on Really Famous. And she was nominated for an Emmy for her role in Transparent. She played Tammy. Now Melora is working on a documentary, and a fun fact, she was also a child actor in some of my favorite shows that I watched when I was little. Now, speaking of The Office, Kate Flannery, who plays Meredith, was also a guest on Really Famous, and we had a great conversation. I like her. You will, too. I put a link in today's show notes so you can easily listen to that episode. And since we all love The Office, I have some extra goodies for you. Every time I'm in LA, I do some little fun video clips on location in spots that I think you guys will love. And last time I was in LA, um, which was of course before the pandemic, I took some fun videos right outside of Dunder Mifflin. So I will post those on Instagram so that you can check them out. Just follow me on Instagram. It's instagram.com slash Kara Mayer. Robinson. You may also want to visit our sponsor, BetterHelp. If there's something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, give BetterHelp a try. BetterHelp is an online counseling platform that you can access at home from your computer or smartphone. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist, and you can start communicating in less than 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. And they have a special offer for really famous listeners. You will get 10% off your first month if you go to betterhelp.com slash really famous. I put a link in the show notes so you can click pretty easily. And when you're done listening to my talk with Melora, head over to my YouTube channel to watch a bonus video. She answers some extra questions about The Office and more. It's at youtube.com slash really famous. Are you West Coast or East Coast or what? I'm West Coast, yeah. Okay, and how is it out there? It's nice. It's nice. It's, you know, lovely weather and, you know, I have a lovely home and spend a lot of time by the pool and working hard on my documentary. And so I, I've got a lot to keep me busy. Two daughters that are teenagers. So that's been lovely to have, you know, lots of time, quality time with them. And my husband's here. And so it's nice. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So your husband is also on the bold type with you, right? Yes. he plays. That, does that film in New York? Oh, is that your phone? Yeah, it is. Um, I don't know who this person is. They just called a minute ago. Is it okay if we hold for two seconds? No problem. I'm, let me just grab it. I'm yeah, sorry. it's fine. I think I'm just going to let them leave a message because I'm not clear on <laughs> okay. who they are or what they're calling about. So, so do you want to listen and see what the message is? Um, no, I'm just going to leave it be. <laughs> okay. Okay. All good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but the bold type, am I right? It films in New York or does it just look like it films in New York? <laughs> it just looks like it films in New York. Oh, we actually really? shoot, yeah. We shoot it in Montreal, Canada. Get out of here. I did not know that is an interesting factoid. Yeah. So for me, wow. something, you know, for me, it's nice to have, something that's nice about this is that I'm not flying back and forth so much. So, right. um, you know, I get to be with my with my kids and my family a little more. I mean, Gildert would come up sometimes, obviously, to be on the show, but, and the kids would sometimes come in the summer and stuff, but it was just, when school was going on, it was like a lot of back and forth. 
Yeah, that's tough. And um, God, Montreal, I'm so like, I'm stumped. I didn't realize it was there because I kept feeling this doesn't feel exactly like New York to me, but it does feel metropolitan. But I never <laughs> would have thought that's where it was. I yeah. love Montreal. <laughs> Yeah, and of course we have a lot of we do do some shooting in New York every year. So there's okay. you know, yeah. <laughs> and I saw your episode that just ran that you directed. Congratulations! Thank you so much. Yeah. So was that like um, fun or totally stressful? It was actually really really fun. I mean, I've directed quite a few things that are independent before. Um, it was my first episodic television. And I just felt really at ease, um, you know, with this crew that I've known for four years and this wonderful cast and, you know, wonderful executives. And just having that engine behind you of the support of the, the studio, the network, the producers, the writers, the, you know, all the studio, all the different department heads, you know, everybody coming together to kind of help you make your vision a reality. It just felt it was it was so actually luxurious and refreshing for me being that all the independent things I've done, I always had to wear multiple hats at the same time. So it was really, um, really a wonderful thing to, to sort of, yeah, get this opportunity to, to, yeah. to direct on the, on the show that I know so well. And, and uh, you know. Yeah. So are you like a multitasker by nature? Or are you good at that kind of thing? Juggling a million things at once? I do like to do, I actually like to do a couple creative things at one time. Yeah. I actually prefer that. I prefer to be, um, to kind of be called on to use, to utilize a lot, of, uh, all my skill sets at one time. I very much, you know, like the times that have been the most turned on, I think in my career is like when I was on Broadway singing, dancing and acting eight times a week, you know, really, really like pulling on me to bring everything that I have to, to the party, as it were, that, that really, that really turns me on. Um, so I loved, you know, I love when I'm, you know, acting and directing and, um, yeah, it really, it seems to really suit my, my personality. Yeah, that's cool. And you just reminded me when you said that too, like there's this whole history that you have, not <laughs> just with theater, but I also was looking at your IMDb page and all of the oh, shows. Oh my God. Oh. One second. I'm okay. so sorry. No, now no. I have someone walking up to my door. I really apologize. <laughs> All good. Oh my goodness. Okay. God. A million things going on. My husband's on a long hike up a very tall hill today. Usually he'd be here to wrangle life, but, um, but it's just me this morning. I'm sorry. It's all good. This is how it is now. Um, this is life. We're all working from home. The door, my doorbell rang probably 20 minutes before we started. So I was like, Hey, you know what? This is actually really good that it happened 20 minutes before. So. Oh my gosh. That reminds me of the pilot of The Office. Ken Quapas was directing the pilot. And I remember we were doing a rehearsal and my cell phone rang and I had gotten to silence it. And he said, uh, I love that. He said, leave it on. Let's see if it rings during a take. And I, <laughs> Because we were doing that kind of mockumentary thing. And I, I thought that was really cool. I love that. And that's the thing too, is like, you know, you spend so much time trying to make everything look just right or sound just right or perfect or whatever. And I've heard back from a lot of people too, who watch the show or listen to the show. And they're like, oh, I love that part of it that like the yeah, dog yeah. was suddenly barking or whatever. And so exactly. it is good. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's really fun. So uh, let me, what's yes. that now? Yeah, <laughs> that's my I dog. That's, that's my dog. dog. She's very excited that there's a new person in the, in the, in the, in the, in the it's, it's crazy. Wait, meaning <laughs> the new person wants to go out and meet the. She wants to go out and say hi to the guy who's come who's come to detail our cars. God, <laughs> she, she's dying to go out and say hi and make a friend. So let me back up for a second to what I was going to ask you about before. I was looking yeah. through your IMDb page and I'm spotting all of my favorite shows when I was you know a child that yeah. you were a child during yeah. as well. So like there was what like the Love Boat, um, yeah. Little House on the Prairie, Quincy. What else am I thinking of? Um, Police Story, Quincy. Quincy, uh, yes. Yeah. I used to watch that with my dad at our summer house. It was like the evening, the, the weekly thing. I think it was like a Sunday night or something like that, and it was the greatest thing. So you were in all these shows. Yeah. You've done like a whole lifetime in entertainment. I have. Yep. Do you remember that part of your life or not? Oh God, so much? yes. Oh yeah, no, very, very vividly. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Started acting professionally when I was seven. Both my act, my parents are actors, so they really taught me the craft of acting very young. And uh, 
And yeah, I mean, I, I wanted, you know, started dancing when I was five, started singing and writing songs when I was two. My mom said I wrote my first song when I was two. Um, I just was driven to, you know, to perform and to, and I just, I had so much fun doing it. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. So it's in your bones. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It, That's it. so cool. And so, uh, what did, did you have was like your mom? Did she take care of your whole managing thing? Was it that kind of situation where they would go with, with you to the set or your dad or how did that Yeah. Work? Yeah. My mom was really my set mom. She would go with me and, you know, she also was an acting teacher. So she taught me, you know, a lot of what I, I mean, I mean, they really gave me an incredible base, both my mom and my dad, I would go over my scenes with them. And, um, yeah, so there was a lot of, a lot of really lucky circumstances. I was born into the right family <laughs> for being who I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess there's a reason why you were, you are the way that you are too, right? Right. I guess, I guess. Oh, I'm wondering if he needs, <laughs> just... we can pause. It's fine. Can you we check a few seconds? Let yeah. me just, give, I think I have to give him the key. Oh, hold on. <laughs> okay. 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 Oh, my goodness gracious. All right. Got it all. Okay. I got, got it. Got it situated. <laughs> I think, unless there's going to be noise that starts, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so are you out and about much nowadays or not so much? I mean, not that much. You know, I have like a little pod of like people that I've seen and have seen me. We've been like quarantining and then we've kind of, um, you know, done some things that were like very social distanced, very far apart at the beginning. And now, you know, we're a little more kind of in each other's. I guess, germ pool, because we've all been seeing each other over the time that it's, you know, been going. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's been nice. And um, my mom and dad, I have an 80 year old mom and a 90 year old dad. So, um, so I see them every weekend, we'll we usually do a meal outside and kind of, uh, you know, I don't know, stay apart, but yeah, yeah, getting harder, harder, not to like hug them. And, you know, I, I think I'm, I think we're hugging now. <laughs> I think we're hugging. I think we're at that point. We hug like with our faces this way, but we're hugging yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's so weird. Everybody washes their hands and, you know, doesn't touch their face. And um, give me one more second. Yeah. Yes. Over to Melora. Oh my goodness gracious. I mean, I really didn't know this was going to be like this. Back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> I love it. You know, it's funny. It's like you were saying about the office pilot. I was, um, I don't know if you know, Tim Daly. Yes. Um, yeah. So he was one of my, yeah, he's great. He's one of my, he was one of my earlier interviews. I mean, he's been on the show a few times, but we did the zoom interview sort of early on uh -huh. and it was so funny because we had so many connection problems. Like his mic wasn't, uh -huh. I was getting feedback or something. And then we switched to the phone and then we switched to the zoom again. And it was like, at first I was going to take it all out. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to leave it in at least for the podcast where everybody can see and hear us like, hello, Tim, Kara, Tim, Kara. And I heard feedback from like fans that were like, Oh, we love that part. You know, Ooh, that's it's funny. Like, it's all good that you have all these little things. Oh God. Sorry. It's yeah, it's a little nuts, but I guess everybody gets a little slice into your, into the craziness of our real lives. Yeah. Yeah. So are you, would you consider yourself to be an introvert or an extrovert? Uh, I think I'm probably an extrovert. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You like to be around people, like you were saying, like you have your group. Are you like a very social person? Yes, I am. I'm very social. I like people a lot. I like being around people. It, it kind of helps me. If Actually, if I get to on an island, I'm, I'm one of those people that I really think one of the greatest joys in my life is collaborating. So I really love to have that feedback from other creative people where we're just bouncing ideas and really sharing and kind of brainstorming. And <clears throat> that's one of my, <clears throat> one of my favorite things in life. And I, I just don't think I work very well on an Island. It doesn't work well for me. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah I don't love that. That mean I do need my alone time, but I definitely do need that. But um, yeah, I would much, this has been like, not great in terms of I don't like that like I don't like going out and and everybody treating everybody like they're a leper and you know looking at everyone and or walking around with the masks and like yeah I like just walking down the street and being able to smile at people or say hello or them smile at you or be like your shirt's really nice or you know or whatever I like I like interacting I really like that 
Yeah, I like that too. I miss that a lot. Yeah. Um, so the getting back to the office, I think that was a very collaborative show, right? Wasn't that the kind of environment? So you must have thrived there. Yeah, I really did. I really did. I loved, you know, we would get to improvise. There were times when they would, you know, they'd hand us a, you know, a script that was like a, a candy bag. We would do it the way it was written. And then they'd say, here's, here's the candy bag. But basically you could pick any of those lines and say anything in there. And then sometimes they would just say, you know, they just walk away and be like, you know what, just improvise it sort of with the basic gist. We're going to go work on the scene because we're not happy with it. And then they'd come back and give us a new scene. And that was really fun. I really love that. Oh, that's so cool. So a candy bag, is that like a technical term or professional acting what term? they called it? It's what they called it. A candy yeah. bag. Yeah. So they would have a bunch of different things and you would just choose what you're feeling. Yeah. It was after we had done the scene, the way it was written, they would give you sort of a selection of like lines you could just pull out. You could just, you know, you could riff a little on a, on a different, you could go down a different path, you know, just to see where it took you. A lot of people, their favorite episode is dinner party, right? Yes. You've heard that a million times, I'm sure. Yes. Yours too or no? Oh, Do yeah. you like that one? Definitely. Yeah, no, absolutely my favorite episode for, for me. It was just great fun. Great fun to do. I An rewatched it the yeah. other night because I watched, you know, yeah, I watched The Office as it was <clears throat> airing. And um, the other night I was like, you know what? I think I haven't seen it in a long time. And I hear it all the time and people love it. I just remembered it being very cringy, you know? uh -huh. <laughs> so, so I watched it again and I was dying. It was so funny. Was there any improv in there too? Was some of that, that candy bag? Um, yeah. Oh yeah. No, we, we always, there was always versions. I mean, like in the dinner party, there's the thing where he says, he's, you know, he almost ran through the plate glass window or something, or he ran through the plate glass window because it was so clean. And, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm the devil. And I did a thing that was just like a total moment of just inspiration. I just went like, you know, and he, and it was just so great because Steve and, and, um, uh, and I think John and, you know, Ed, like we're all sitting there and, and Steve just like the, the reaction was so cool because they had two cameras, like that they were filming me and him at the same time. So what's nice about that is you're really getting the reaction to what the actor's doing because sometimes you do something different and then you do something and then, you know, you're not getting their reaction. So it was really cool to be able to be capturing everybody's reaction in real time to what, to that surprise that I gave. And then he was able to, you know, and then he was like, oh, well, yeah, yeah, you, are. you know, and there was like that back and forth that was not in the script. Like, you know, exactly. It just wasn't quite like that. <laughs> so. That is so great. <laughs> Now, how did you not crack up when like Steve would do something? Cause he's so funny. Like how, did you, did you sometimes like crack yeah, up in the middle yeah. of something? I mean, my you? job was really to be the straight man. So I did a lot. I was really pretty much, I was pretty good at doing that. I was pretty good at holding that until they said cut, <laughs> I would say. But um, yeah, in that particular episode, I think Jenna and I had a little scene up at the, where she like goes to the bathroom and I'm kind of knocking on the door or something. And, and we, it was kind of like the last scene that we filmed of that episode, I think, or last one of the night and everybody had been gone home. And I think we were just exhausted. And I think just it's, that was a really hot, hot, hot set because it was in the Valley and it was, we had to turn the air conditioning off and it really was a teeny tiny condo. That was not, that was not a set that was actually a teeny tiny condo. So we were all like sweltering and exhausted and, you know, doing all that stuff all day long. And then, and I think both of us just lost it. Like we could not keep it together. <laughs> I mean, it went on much too long for my taste. <laughs> like I, you know, and it's really awful when you get that, that giggly because you can't like, it's, it's like literally almost like you're, you, you can't stop, you know, that was, but I think it was in a way sort of a letting off of steam and a letting off of like having to keep it so, cause you know, Jan is so, she's so serious in the whole thing all the time. And she's so kind of, you know, <laughs> just. <laughs> yeah, yes. But you know, I also feel like she sort of went through a little bit of an evolution though. Do you think that at all yeah. from the beginning oh, yeah. to the end? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, sure. She had an excellent arc. Mm -hmm. 
So how did you, were you part of that at all? Or did that just kind of, you saw it evolving? You saw no, no, evolving? no. We definitely were, were, you know, in tandem, like sort of that wonderful dance between the writers and the actors. And I think, you know, they kind of bring something to you and then they see what you bring to it. And then that, that sort of inspires them to, you know, um, the whole Jan getting a boob job thing was, I think, um, from me when we were at the upfronts, you know, saying to Greg Daniels something about, you know, the, the cast that went on before us, I was like, I just noticed that all those women have boob jobs. <laughs> I was like, and I don't think that, I don't think that anyone in our cast does. <laughs> I was like looking around trying to figure out if they did. I just think he sort of it just gave him this idea of, you know, um, of, of doing that. I think Greg was really great at like picking up on those things that, that were sort of real things that he could make fun of, you know, like he came over for dinner once to our house and I have a big painting of myself with my, it's basically the cover of my, my second CD that I made of my original songs called Purr. And, um, and it's a big painting, kind of a, a knockoff of a Gil Elvgren pinup. Um, and, uh, you know, and I, you know, I kind of always thought it was like, to me, it's like, I have a, I have a great sense of humor about it. Cause to me, it's like, it's, it's, it's funny. The songs are kind of cheeky and it's, you know, but if you don't know me and you walk into my, and I even think I said something like, if you walk into my house and you don't know me and you see this big painting of like me <laughs> in this like pinup pose, you know, you might think that that's, you know, that's real. And like, I really, I, I, like, I really like I'm doing that because I needed that painting of myself up there, <laughs> but that's really not it at all. It's more like in honor of, you know, my CD of like the songs that I wrote, the the whole feeling of the CD. It's something that is like a moment in, in time in my life that I want to honor and enjoy. And I really love that CD. And so anyway, I think that's where the whole Warhol thing came from when, when Jan has the, you know, the pictures of herself up on the thing. And, you know, like I think Greg was inspired by those things and then was able to kind of make, take them over the top and make them kind of, you know, um, wonderfully like self-centered. <laughs> So. Yes, I love that. I mean, that's what makes it so interesting too, because those are like real bits that are turned into something different. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But you don't just get that, I guess. I don't. I mean, I'm not a no, uh, a yeah. writer, but you yeah. don't just pull that out of nowhere. So it's like right. it's original for sure. Yeah, yeah. So is it one of the things that you look at and you say like, I'll never have this experience again as far as what it was like doing The Office? No, I mean, I don't know that I ever. I don't know that I ever think that about anything. I mean, I don't think you ever really get the same experience on any show you're on. You know, every show has got its own unique flavor, its own personality, its own tone, its own relationships. Um, uh, I could have never expected that it was going to be sort of this iconic hit that it, that it is. And that, you know, because of streaming, it sort of, you know, lives on and on and on. Whereas yes. when I was a kid, you know, you would do something, it would come out, it would air, and that would be that. Yeah, but you so, know what? For sure, The Office is anything but yeah. like airing, and it's, it's so big. I mean, I bet is. so many more people watch it now than even, and, and we all watched it when yeah. it was, you know, uh, whatever you call it, live uh, weekly true. Kind of a new episode. I know, I know. And they it's watch true. them over and over again, right? Each episode yeah. they'll do over and over. I mean, my son loves it. It's one of his favorite shows, and he's been watching it for years, and I think he's probably been through the whole series like at least twice. Yeah, yeah. But I have to tell you, it holds up, right? Yeah, so it, it was, it's not that recent when you think about it, right? It was like a few years 15 back. 15 years ago. 15? Is that how many? 15 years ago is when we started it. When you started. And so how many, what was it, like seven or eight or something? Seven years. Seven mm -hmm. years. So, all right, it's relatively recent, but yeah, 15 years ago, that was a long time, but it, and like the world has changed since then, mm -hmm. and yet. It's mm -hmm. still so funny. Why? Why do you think? Yeah. I mean, I think you can be, you know, when you're being in inappropriate and you're trying to work that muscle of being inappropriate, that works for a long time, <laughs> you know? Yeah. For a really long time. I heard, I think it was Mindy Kaling on a podcast talking about the fact that a lot of the jokes wouldn't fly today, meaning they wouldn't be allowed to be written and played out. 
but they would still be very funny. Like they're just, they're super funny on the office today, but that uh -huh. the whole kind of mood has changed so that maybe they would have been nixed a lot of the funny things mm -hmm. and the funny things that, you know, th that everybody, especially Michael said, probably right. that character even wouldn't be tolerated today, even though it's still, he's still so funny and everyone's right. still so funny. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's unfortunate if that's true. Yeah. You really get so politically correct that you can't, that you can't explore people like that because there's people in the world that are like that, you know? And I think it's really important that we get to see that in blazing color and we get to laugh at it and we get to kind of point fingers at it and go, ooh, you know? Or even maybe people see a little reflection of themselves here and there in that. And I think that's that's good. That's good for human growth. It's it's really important to be able to to be aware of of these things. I don't think it's good to um I don't think it's good to like shield. Um, I think in fact, you should really open it up and shine a light on all the different aspects of things, you know? Yeah, and that's exactly what she was saying. She was saying it would be too bad because it probably, it would have been crushed. You know, a lot of it would have been crushed today yeah. because of the climate. Right. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Did you have a, uh, a particular person on the cast or who you were closest to at the time or? Um, well, I mean, I liked, um, I mean, Kate and Kate and I, you know, liked each other a lot. Um, we had lots of fun. She's the one who plays Meredith. Oh, um, I know Kate. I know Kate well, and she's been on the show and she's oh, really? one of my favorite guests. Oh, I adore her. Yeah. Yes. She's great. Kate's great. She's great. And, um, and I think Larry Wilmore and I were really, we really clicked. He was one of the writers on the show <clears throat> and he also played Mr. Brown. And um, we really clicked. Like we're still friends. Like I still, I still see him. And I, I also really like, um, I like Greg Daniels a lot, and his and his wife Suzanne Daniels. Um, <clears throat> we've had meals, and you know, I, I kept, I kept in touch. And like Suzanne and I have done things, you know, just as girls, like out and had lunches. And um, they're really great, really, really great people. Um, and then Paul Feig is somebody who directed uh, a couple episodes and he's someone who um, had been on a series with me years before I did the series of Dirty Dancing and he was an actor on that show. So, uh, so it was really fun for us to reconnect. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, I always think about like, I wonder, is it hard when you have spent so much time with a group of people and you sort of get that family atmosphere and then the project ends and then you move on you've been doing it your whole life. So I imagine you're, you're pretty used to it or you have a way of kind of moving on without it being an issue or no. Right. Right. No. I mean, I think that that's, I think that that's really true. And I, I think that it's, there's, you know, there's relationships that you create and then you have to, those relationships have to change and then, you know, and then they, um, they change again and, um, and you just have to kind of, um, yeah, you just kind of have to, you know, deal with just, Sorry, my daughter is just oh. <laughs> trying to find a path that she can. <laughs> I see her. I saw her behind you, and I see her in the mirror. I just saw her walk through the mirror. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Is she okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I think um, yeah, I think you just have to be able to like ride the flow of you know of of whatever of whatever it is because it's when you're working together it's one thing and when you're not it's another thing i mean we see each other at events and we're always like very happy to see each other give each other hugs and stuff and you know but everybody always thinks that you know because you're working with a group of people that you're like best friends and you know i always sort of feel really lucky and really happy when you have a really good working professional relationship with people um because they don't have to be your best friends in order to to have a great working relationship. Mm -hmm. So um, I had I had a great working relationship with everybody on that show. I really I really enjoyed uh, enjoyed everybody. I mean, I particularly enjoyed the way Steve and I worked in scenes together. You know, he just was really great at tossing the ball and catching the ball. Um, you know, in different ways and sort of always making room for whatever I was bringing and responding and reacting in a way that was really um, fun and, and surprising. And I think that we kind of did that for each other in a way that was really, that really had a really interesting and sparky chemistry, which is part of why the Jan and Michael, you know, storyline kind of evolved as it did.
that was something that we all yeah. just sort of felt into in the pilot. Like, huh, there's something really interesting about these two together. For sure. I mean, so funny. But so did you only do the scenes like a few times because they were able to use the two cameras and get more footage right away? Or was it the yeah. kind of, yeah? Yeah, no, I mean, it wouldn't be like 50 times, 50 takes. No, I mean, it was right. TV, so we had to move along and, you know, but we would, but we were able to, you know, play and sculpt them and, you know, change them a little if in the moment if we needed to or wanted to. So do you play and sculpt before? I'm curious. So you, you like, let's say you have a scene with Steve and, uh, you know, you each have the script or whatever. And do you talk about it before you do it? Or you just get in there and just play it out and see what, what happens? Uh, yeah, we, we pretty much would, we would get in and rehearse and then talk about it sometimes if it was, you know, if it needed some kind of adjustment or wasn't feeling really genuine here or whatever we would, or the joke wasn't landing right or whatever. But usually we would, yeah, we would just sort of rehearse it and then you would do it. Yeah. At the point after the office really took off, did you start to get recognized a lot more often? Like, did you, did you see a difference in how people were reacting to you or responding, treating you on the street? Yeah, the yeah, definitely. I mean, I went from being, you know, that girl that everybody kind of, could recognize because I'd been working so long and people would say things like, did we go to high school together? Or, you know, that kind of thing um, to our, your Melora Hardin, you know, I remember the first time somebody came up to me and said, you're Melora Hardin <clears throat> and knew my name. And that was in Whole Foods. I was shopping and someone said, Oh my God, you're Melora Hardin. You're on the office. I love it. You know? And that was sort of a turning point was like when people start to know you by name and um, then, then things are shifting. That's so interesting. That must've been such a weird moment in Whole Foods where you're like, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a good moment. I think I'd worked, I'd worked, I'd worked a long time <laughs> to get to that moment. <laughs> but also, I knew, I knew I, yeah. And it was, it was a long time coming. So there was, that must've been a really a nice, a nice thing. And I'm sure it still is the case. I don't think you're ever going to have less visibility than you do now, even though it was 15 years ago. <laughs> right, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I get recognized from the office every day when I'm out and about in the world. So is that weird? Like, do you feel a little bit self-conscious when you go out? No, no. I mean, I, sometimes I'm, you know, I'm just going about my day and I'm sort of surprised that I'm like, oh, you know, and they'll be like, oh, I just had to tell you, or can we take a picture or, you know, it's really, yeah. sweet. it's actually very sweet. They're usually very, uh, everybody's very excited, you know, to meet me and they love the show and, and uh, yeah, so. Yeah. Well, it's nice. Um, yeah. A million little things also. So mm -hmm. uh, you're paired up with my, uh, another one of my guests who I really like, Jason Ritter. I adore him. Yeah. Him. He's great. Is he That's good nice to work guy. with too? Oh yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Everybody on that show is wonderful. Yeah. So Allison, that. Yeah, Allison and I had done, um, I play her mother. Um, she and I had done a movie together years ago. Um, called 17 again. <clears throat> and even on that movie, everybody had said, oh my God, you guys look like you could be sisters. You could be, you know, whatever, you could be related. So it was really fun to, to get back together to work with her again. Um, uh, and James Roday and, and uh, you know, DJ Nash, the, guy, the creator of the show. Everybody's really lovely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how do you think over the years in entertainment, like how have you changed? Have you seen yourself evolve? I mean, sure. <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, uh, I mean, you know, just now including in the, the directing and um, just expanding a little more, being able to kind of bring the, the dancing, the singing, the acting, the directing, the, 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 the songwriting, the whatever, like it kind of is all in a weird way amalgamating into kind of the things that I'm attracted to, where I'm going, the things that I end up putting my creative energy into. And this documentary that I'm making is very, very much sort of like an everything of, you know, it's sort of like a real, it's a real, you know, 
work of art that I'm, that I'm sculpting and have been working on for four years. And so it's, I would say, yeah, I think it's just, um, I've gotten to do some incredible things with some incredible people. And I think you just, you just keep getting reconnected to, or I keep getting reconnected to, um, to what is really the driving force in me, which is always kind of, um, exposing, expanding, expressing, creating, you know, op opportunities to be creative. I'm always looking for that. I'm looking for the people that can facilitate that or can, um, collaborate with me on those things. Um, and also I think the other thing that I'm more focused on is just sort of the idea of what I can do that's making a positive impact in the world through my skill sets, you know, through the singing, the dancing, the acting, the, you know, the directing, like how, you know, where can I, where can I make a positive impact? Where can I um, try to uh, put a little light on something? And, you know. So the documentary, it's been four years that you've been working on it. Yeah. And how is it coming along and what, what are your plans for it? Uh, really great. We're getting we're getting close to uh, to our final edit, and then I don't know. We'll see. Like, is there going to be a Sundance? I don't know. Like, will we will we submit to Sundance? Um, will we do the film festival route? I don't know. We'll see. You know, it, I guess it just depends on how everything's changed because of all this, and and where where you know movies like this are. You know, maybe it's to go straight to um, a platform like Netflix and I don't know, like the original, original, you know, documentary feature, like where does that have a life that's, you know, going to reach as many people as possible. Yeah. And a lot of well, times now it is, it is on the other platforms, you know, right. more so than so. the traditional route. Right. So what is it about the documentary and what is it called? Did you name it yet? I don't have a title yet. I mean, I'm, you know, I've worked working with many titles, but I'm still not landed on one. So I think best to just say it's untitled at the moment. Um, and uh, well, it's it's really a story about real life serendipity and um, magic. Like real life, real life serendipity is better than magic. Um, it's about you know healing, women holding women up, um, female friendship, what it ultimately takes to transform trauma, and um, and it's a very it's a very feminine story that um, that kind of evolves through creativity through through um, yeah through creativity it, it it's 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 a very it's it's very it's very interesting and it just sort of fell in my lap and it it um, it happens I happen to be in it because it's I'm part of the story just um, you know so it's it's it, it sort of like somebody found me actually through a screen when I was, when I was uh, 10, I was on a, a Saturday morning show for kids called thunder about a wild black stallion that came when I whistled and together we would save the day. And, um, and uh, so then, you know, flash forward to four years ago, uh, one of my best friends is the Grammy award winning singer songwriter, Paula Cole. And she wanted me to direct her 20th anniversary of her, one of her hits, where have all the cowboys gone music video. So, um, I called my producer and I said, I need someone who lives in town who has a horse. And I went over to her house and she said, Oh my God, you were on one of my very favorite shows. Uh, when I was a little girl, you were on thunder and you played Cindy Prescott and, you know, and you, um, you and thunder were like, you, 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 you were everything to me. And, um, so anyway, that's where, that's where the movie starts. And, uh, it starts with, with that, uh, and we become very good friends and, and then ultimately, um, you know, it becomes this journey of healing. And I think that I'm just really grateful that I turned the camera on. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. And I never really so planned to make a documentary. It's just, it's just oh. sort of like, I just had a real instinct and a real, I had a real just an, I guess, I guess I had faith that it was, uh, something about it was unique and special and yeah, it felt there did feel, it did feel like there was like real life magic in it, sort of everyday magic, you know, 
-hmm. And I kind of was like, this is something is really special about this. I need to, you know, we need to capture it. That's interesting because it was kind of serendipitous that it happened. Very much so. Right. Very and much. so I like that word serendipity too. I think it yeah. has such a positive, right? It can mean so many things, but it just has a, has a great, uh, I guess, association or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's so cool that she saw you when you were 10, you said, and she was watching Thunder. How interesting, like you would have had no idea about that. And I'm sure she thought about the show and you were an inspiration to her all along. Like, that's so cool. Who would think that, right? Yeah, exactly. It just makes you wonder too, doesn't it? Like just being on screens for so many years and so many different uh, shows, I'm sure you've impacted so many people without realizing it. Yeah, yeah. And that's sort of the wonderful thing if you're, you know, if you are an actor to think that you're, that you're doing that, that even though I'm more consciously trying to make a positive impact in the world now as, you know, at the age I am now, I think, you know, as an entertainer, you really can be doing that. You know, and here I was doing that. I was just on a show that, you know, for me, I had said to my mom two weeks before where she was tucking me in at night, like, I want to get a show about a horse. And then like my dream came true and I got this show about a horse. And, um, I thought I was just like living out a dream. You know, I was just having fun. I was doing this thing that I love to do, acting and being a horse with a horse all the time. And, you know, and, and I was just having a ball. And here I was really changing someone's life and sort of offering a beacon of hope. And, and um, so it's really an incredible connection to have. And then to have sort of, you know, the different, um, you know, she wrote me a fan letter and I, I wrote her back, you know, and, and, uh, but I don't remember that, but she remembers that. Like for her, it was like a very seminal moment. Um, and yet I have a very vague memory of my mom coming into my room and say, and cause I would get sometimes fan mail. And um, I remember her coming in and, and she didn't, she wouldn't like recommend that I would answer back all the fan mail, especially if it was like men or something. <laughs> um, but she, I remember that there was a time when she came into my room and she said, this is a little girl who's your age and she's writing you a letter and you should write her back. I do remember that. And I don't know if this, if it was this letter or if it was some other little girl, but I do remember that. And maybe it was like, maybe it was hers, which is, which is really interesting if it was. That is because she remembers cool. getting the letter back and in my little girl handwriting, like she remembers it being very, you know, my, my 10 year old handwriting. Well, then if you only wrote one back to like a girl your age and she has a letter, it does seem like, why wouldn't it be her? Right. Yeah, it could have been her. <laughs> that is so cool. I just love that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, what's one of the biggest lessons that you'd say that you've learned in life? Um. I mean, I would say so many, I mean, there's so many, um, that's a really hard question. Cause it's such a big question. I can go narrow, narrow it down if it's easier. Yeah. Try narrowing it down. Okay. So, um, sometimes I ask like a few different categories, like what's one of the lessons you've learned about Hollywood? Uh huh. And usually that's somebody, you know, it's a little easier to come up with something quickly. Right, right. Or easily. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could say, I could say even through the documentary and, and, you know, just, you know, getting, growing up, <laughs> becoming a more mature woman. Um, I think it's something to do with like faith, you know, the difference between hope and faith. Hope is when you hope something's going to work out. And faith is when you kind of know it's already all worked out. And I think that I, um, I think that's a big, that's a big one. I would have liked to have employed more faith. That doesn't mean that you don't work hard. That doesn't mean that you don't, you know, try to go towards what you want. But I do think that there's a lot of value in kind of having, having faith that, you know, and that's, that's very much about my documentary in terms of, um, you know, this, this kind of already had, it already had played its, it already had like everything about it is just sort of 
continues to be this thing that um, keeps working out. Like it already had a, a destiny. It already had a path that really I just needed to kind of follow the breadcrumbs. And I'm just, and I just feel like that's, um, that's what I think I'm very, very good at in, you know, as far as acting, I, I'm, I'm very, very good at sort of being in the moment and following the, 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 the inspirations of the moment that take me down, you know, this way or that way, or, you know, up or down or, you know, um, and that, that I can ride that sort of effortlessly and um and really enjoy the surprise of that when you're working with an actor who is wonderful and is sending you lots of different cues that maybe are surprising that you wouldn't have necessarily expected so that you can ride you really can ride that wave from take to take you can change and you can because if you're really in that it's it's very uh it's it's very exciting and very and 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 effortless in a way and i think that's to do with having faith that it's all it's all there you don't have to you don't have to like strong arm it so I think that's that's probably the biggest lesson that I'm right now like really um digesting and sort of like getting really I think very oh very um in touch with is this idea of of um of faith is there one gig, one job that you can remember that somehow got away, but you really wished that you had landed? Well, for a long time, it was Back to the Future, which I was cast in, and then I didn't end up doing it because they thought I was too tall for uh, Michael J. Fox. Um, it was when Eric Stoltz was cast to play uh, McFly, and then I, um, and then I uh, was cast to play his girlfriend. Uh, Jennifer Parker was the character's name, and then. <clears throat> when they hired Michael J. Fox, they thought, uh, and actually I heard that it was the two female executives at the time that thought it was emasculating for the lead character to have a girlfriend that was taller than him. So even as far as we still have to go as women in this business and in, in, in the world in general, we have, come, we have come quite a ways because I don't think you would hear a, f a female executive say that in 2020. I just don't think that that would be that would be said on any set by a female executive. What do you just wish would change in terms of um, what it's like for women in Hollywood? Um, I, you know, I just think that, I think that women need to be advocates for other women. I think that for the longest time we were raised in, a, we were raised in a time when, you know, there were, the, there was like this idea of scarcity. And so, women felt that they had to fight for that one slot. And so what it did was it created a culture of women sort of competing with other women. And <clears throat> I think that if you look at men in the workplace, they very much are, you know, each other's allies and advocates. And I think women are great allies of each other. And I think that we have to start being allies in the workplace. We need to start um, really making ourselves available to be mentors. That's what I love about the bold type is that, you know, Jacqueline Carlisle is an incredible mentor. Um, that's what I love about my documentary is I think it really is the female gaze. Um, it is about female friendship. It is about how females, uh, in this particular case, this particular friendship of two women, how they do it, which is not linear and is not, um, the obvious um, traditional A plus B equals C way. It's much more spiraling and circular and meandering. And it's much more the way that I think women are together. And <clears throat> so I think that mostly women need to um, stand up with each other for each other and build that camaraderie and that allyship that will move everything forward because we can't keep complaining about there not being um enough you know um voices female voices and you know now we we just need to be we need to be doing that we need to be you know it's like great that you have your podcast and that you're 
you know, you're interviewing people and you're, you're doing it your way. You're doing it, you know, your way and you're a woman. And so that's going to have a feminine touch to it. And I think that's really important. And I think it's really important that we all show up for each other and that we, and that we support one another and that we keep getting our voices out there, get, get our voices heard. I think a perfect example of that is the bold type right? Yeah. That's really so much across the board, what goes on. I mean, there's so many women supporting each other. Like you said, Jacqueline is such a great mentor. Also the three women who work together kind of mm -hmm. side by side as colleagues for the main characters, like the same thing with them too. It's so interesting, I think. Yeah. And so uh, for, not even forward thinking, but so current and appropriate. It's modern. Yeah. And modern. that's why I, I really wanted to do, I really wanted to do this when they offered it to me. I was like, you know, this is a good, I had just come off transparent and been nominated for an Emmy and I loved that transparent had was great entertainment, but it also had done such great things for the trans community and open people's minds and hearts to what that is. And that, you know, trans people are people. Um, and, and it was really, I, I really felt this urge and this like sort of very strong need to, whatever I did next to be something that was going to do good in the world. And I, I had not seen pictures of women who were women of power um, at the top of their game who also were kind and had integrity and were challenging their, their, you know, employees for sure, but in a way that was fair and kind and thoughtful and, and, you know, with, with not with punitive behavior, but with instead with educational you know, uh, behavior and, and tools. And I just think that's, that's really what we want. We want to all be doing in the world and we all want to be seeing and we want to be working with those people. Yeah. And how do you feel about like, uh, millennials and Gen Z, they're coming up, they're active, they're using their voices. What do you think? I feel like there's a little bit of laziness in, in, and that I don't really like that. I feel like I really want them to understand that they have to work hard. I think it's unfortunate that there was this little phase of time where when these kids were growing up, you know, just for showing up at the baseball game, you got a trophy. And I think that's, I think that we're, I hope that we're kind of, you know, going away from that. But I, I don't think that's healthy for kids to feel that, that they that they're you know that they don't have to fight for what they want they don't have to work hard for what they want they don't have to push to stand apart from the others and um and so i i would i do really want to be a voice that encourages um the young people to to really to work hard and to also not be so in some ways it's like i'm a little worried that in college campuses we have more you know um sort of I don't even know what they call them but what just like, safe spaces is that what you're talking yeah, about and like problems problems for for kids if they fail a test you know they like go on antidepressants and you know I just I want there to be more resilience in the in the young people I want them to understand that they need more hardiness they need more and I think that's because like they need more opportunity to fail there's a lot of information. There's a lot of learning. There's a lot of education in, in failure. And I feel like um, sometimes people are not allowed to fail. And I think that's really a disservice to our kids. Um, you know, we saw it with the whole college scandal of like, you know, people sort of getting their kids or, or like, you know, paying for their kids to, to go to college. And I just feel like to me, it's, it's, I don't really even have judgment about the parents as much as I just feel it's a disservice to the children. I feel like it's such a disservice to the children because it makes them feel like they can't succeed without, without like, you know, and it, it's just, I don't know how you even, I don't even know how you recover from, from that, from sort of that the people that are your parents don't believe in you enough that they, that they want to allow you to, um, trip up and make mistakes you know it's unfortunate so i guess i would just say like i also at the same time really believe they have a, this giant opportunity to change the world i mean they really are stepping into some big big questions and big issues that are running around and floating around and you know the political system and the 
police system and the, you know, like just my goodness, the, the things that could really change right now are really in the way, in a way, you know, and gun control and like they're in the hands of the young people who are, you know, going to be voting this year. I mean, my daughter is 18. She's voting this year. And that's really exciting because when I hear her talking with her friends about the things that they care about, the environment and, you know, the things that actually matter for the success of the future of this planet um, is, is exciting because I do think that I do think kids are thinking um, differently and I, I really hope that they are. So um, I think in that regard, like they're great and they are the future. Okay. And my light just like went out. Yeah. I, I see I the light went out. Like went, that was that. So, you know, again, technical fun that we're all dealing with around here. Right. Exactly. Well, well that's I have something- no idea if I have light on my face now, but. You do. I mean, it's a little darker. I could see that it went off, but do you have a ring light or something? Is that what it is? It's a little, it's like a little like light above my, above my. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think you're lit. Okay. Do you have like a a window or something near you? That must be what you're getting light from. I have a window in front of me. uh, Okay. (laughs) <laughs> All right. So let's do this. I usually do about a 10 minute, like kind of a little bit different, quicker questions. I mean, not like a speed round or anything like that, but if you want to, um, they're kind of similar to the kind of questions that we already, or that I asked already, but just a little bit okay. different. And then we'll put that on separately as its own video. Um, okay. that people can enjoy. So you ready for that? Sure. Okay, good. That was Melora Hardin. Watch our bonus video now on YouTube, youtube.com slash really famous. I ask Melora more questions about the office and a few other things. Subscribe when you get there and remember to tap the notifications bell so you're notified when I drop a new video, which is usually once or twice a week. You can also listen to my talk with Kate Flannery, AKA Meredith from the office right now. I put a link in today's show notes. And if you'd like to start feeling better today, go to betterhelp.com slash really famous and get 10% off your first month of therapy. I'm Kara. Thanks for listening. Thanks also to friends of the show, Lindsay and Brenda and Aline and Bob and Jamie and Pat. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Um, now my computer's about to die, oh. so I'm going to have to plug it in. Okay. <laughs> um, let me just see if I can reach okay. the plug from here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know if I can, I think I might be able to. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Stuff <laughs> <in the> chest. <laughs> Man. <laughs> uh. Oh, gotta love it. <laughs>